Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Bill Huang, an undergraduate of Media and Culture at Lancaster University in the UK. Today's video is episode number two of the book, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, chapters three to nine. Let's get started. Chapter three, The Disembodied Lady. This story is about a woman named Christina, who was an energetic, energetic single parent mother with two children aged 27 and worked as a computer programmer at home. She was diagnosed with severe sensory neuropathy. Her symptoms were, at first, she had pain in the bowel, and then um, gallstones was found. So then the removal of the gallbladder was advised. The night before surgery, Christina had a terrible dream in which she could not use her body to do anything. She couldn't walk focus, and feel anything. The next day, her dreams turned into reality. She began to walk unsteadily, dropping things with awkward, flailing movements, finding difficulty in controlling her muscles. When eating, she would either miss or overshoot completely and couldn't speak as her jaws were dropped and her vocal posture was lost. At one point, she even told Sax that she felt disembodied. After surgery, she slowly regained control over her body, but every time it required an extra amount of attention as a result of the loss of proprioception, aka kinesthesia, the body's ability to sense movement, action, and location. Without it, she would just collapse. And she heavily, she relied heavily on her visual and audio feedback. Christina has both succeeded and failed. She succeeded in operating as she gained back control over her body, but she failed as she remained defective and defeated. To which sex says, the most important things in life seems to be the ones that are the most simple and familiar to us. Chapter 4, The Man Who Fell Out of Bed He was a nice, young, normal man who came and stayed in the hospital because the neurologist thought that he had a lazy left leg. He was surprised AF when he realized that a leg was lying next to him and kept falling out of bed. He was surprised and bewildered and could not believe that it was actually his own leg, which he even thought it was a joke. Simultaneously, he didn't know where his actual left leg was. In general, he had completely lost his awareness of his hemiplegic limb, aka his paralyzed left limb. Chapter 5. Hands Madeline J., 60 years old, constantly blind with cerebral palsy, spasticity, and atheses. She was expectedly, uh, she was expected to be, retard, to be retarded and regressed. But no, she was really elegant and high spirits with exceptional intelligence and literacy. And she kept saying that her hands were completely useless and they're just lumps of dough and didn't feel a part of her. Her senses were intact, but couldn't identify anything that was placed in her hands and had no memory of using her hands at all as Len, she always had others helping her. And so, Sex had an idea to let her impulse set in so as to let her interested, make her interested in using her hands, such as to let her reach for bagels or so, which eventually she got interested in using her hands to explore objects as expected, like using clay to make models. Developmental Agnosia Madeline J's rare illness is the inability to comprehend the importance of various forms of stimulation that cannot be attributed to impairment of a primary sensory modality. And in regard to Madeline J, Sachs also says her derealization is sudden, but so is the return. Chapter 6 is about phantoms. Phantoms is a persistent image or memory of a part of the body, usually a limb, for months or years after its loss. An American physician 
Weir, Weir Mitchell says there are not one but multiple kinds of phantoms. The first one may be compelling, dangerous, and real. The second one may be either painful or painless, and the third one、um, may be distorted, as known as negative phantoms or phantoms of absence. The causes of phantoms may be either damage to the sensory cortex of the parietal lobe or nerve stump, neural mass, nerve da- nerve damage, disturbance in the spinal nerve roots or sensory tracts. Chapter Seven on the level. This story is about a 93-year-old fine old chap, Mr. McGregor. He had Parkinson's, so he tilts to the left around 20 degrees and doesn't seem to notice until he sees himself in the mirror. And why is that? Parkinson's can affect the labyrinthine, proprioception, and visualization. But labyrinthine dysfunction, meaning the dysfunction of the balance proportion. In the inner ear, often comes first. Hence, it is normal to see patients being utterly tilted and not noticing. Therefore, in order to noticing、uh, notice himself that notice that he's tilting, Sachs and McGregor invented a spiritual spectacle to help him see himself tilting. And at the end, it not only helped Mr. McGregor himself, but also. For other Parkinson's patients as well. Chapter Eight: Eyes Right. Mrs. S, an intelligent, humorous woman in her sixties who suffered a massive stroke affecting the deep and back portions of the right cerebral hemisphere. She couldn't see the world on the left, only on the, only the right. For example, she only sees the right half of the plate and complains about. The portions of the food and only putting makeup on the right side of her face. Saxon's team helped her make a, a made a rotating wheelchair so she could see the world as a whole. It worked, but it was a little bit tiring. So Sax convinced her to try rotating the plate instead of herself. But it was surprisingly harder for her to do that in instead、uh, than to rotate herself. Sachs also tried to find ways that help her to see the to help her see her left side, like her face. So a camera is used. But when Mrs. S saw it, she was stressed and bewildered AF. So Sachs stopped. Unilateral neglect patients, meaning patients who do not respond, report, and orient to external stimuli presented on the affected side, such as. Mrs. S act as if nothing happens on the left, and even possibly as if the left doesn't exist. Chapter nine: The present speech. Why this chapter is named the present speech is because one day Sachs heard aphasiac laughing in the aphasia ward as they were listening to the present speech. Also, in this chapter, Sachs introduces us. To two types of patients, aphasiacs and tonal agnosiacs. Aphasiacs are people who could grasp the meaning of speech by listening to the tone, expression, feeling, etc. of the speaker, but have little idea of what is actually said to them. Kind of like a dog, they are sensitive to facial expressions, body movements, appearances, which are preserved and even enhanced. In aphasiac, blind aphasiacs especially are particularly sensitive, particularly sensitive to vocal nuance, tune, rhythm, cadence, melody, modulations, inflections, intonations from the speaker's voice. They have disorders in the left temporal lobe. As for tonal agnosiacs, on the other hand, who are the total opposite of aphasiacs, they understand speech word by word. But could hardly understand feelings, emotions, facial expressions of a speaker. And speech, when you speak to them, your speech has to be formal and perfect for them to understand, because they are sensitive to words and grammar, like Grammarly. Writing's not that easy, but Grammarly can help. 
This sentence is grammatically correct. They have disorders in the right temporal lobe. And that's it for today, guys. Episode two, chapters three to nine of the summary of the book, "The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat." And make sure to check out the first episode of the summary, which is right here of chapters one and two of the book. And if you're interested, welcome to check out my TED Talk videos,、uh, TED Talk summary videos as well. And make sure to comment below, share this video, turn on notifications, and subscribe to my channel. Now, see you in the next video. Bye bye.